supposed to uh, play in Paris last Sunday. Um, so how did you uh, get to know about the attacks? I all over the TV you know, as it happened. And they were filming it, you could still hear gunshots. You know. It's so dumb. Those people are so dumb. You know. What for? They think it's going to be a heroic thing, kill innocent people, you know. Assholes. Cowards, you know. Did, did the thought come up uh, uh, in your mind that uh, this could have happened at a Motorhead concert as yeah, well? Yeah, sure, of course. I mean, we played the Bassacron many times, but ten times, you know. It was a regular show for us in Paris. But uh, thankfully, not that night. And was it clear for you that you're not going to play that weekend? Well, I didn't think they'd let us play. I mean, it was the day after, you know. So the attack sort of came out of nowhere at that concert. Did that change anything for you? When no. you go on, cha on stage now? I would have gone on the day after. You know, if, if they stop you, then you, they win. And they're not going to beat me, you know what I mean? I do what I'm supposed to do. If the police cancel it, I can't do nothing about that. But we didn't cancel it, you know. So you would have played and would continue playing? Yeah, fuck those people. You know, they don't like rock and roll. And I don't like them. Right. Um, but do you think we're more vulnerable now? Or do you feel more vulnerable, something like that being able to happen? We've always been vulnerable, you know. Every day you go out the house, you're vulnerable. You know, you're inches from diving under a bus, you know, or somebody hitting you over the head for your money, you know. I mean, there's nothing is safe. Everybody seems to be obsessed with safety, you know. Well, nothing's safe, okay? Nothing. Make the most of it while you're safe now. He won't be tomorrow, maybe. So the French president is now talking about of war. And well, war is one of the themes also. You've got to see his point. I mean, he just said Pearl Harbor in his capital city. You know, I mean, they declared war on him, not him on them. But would you, I mean, you're one of your topics and themes in your lyrics is war as well. Would you describe this situation as war? Well, it's difficult to think of another description, you know. A bunch of guys running around in the capital city with, you know, automatic weapons. Kill 137 people, what do you call it? <laughs> you know, it's not, not exactly fraternity, equality, you know. Um. You also lost a former band uh, um, member last yeah. week. Does that yeah, make you? He's the second one. First was and now Phil. Um, yeah, it knocks you back a bit. You know, I mean, I'm, I know Phil. It feels like all my life. You know, it's not, but it felt like it. You know. and he was a real character. You know, he was a real nutcase. And I do admire that in the person. Um, but he, I think he lost the will to live, you know, because he was doing a lot of the wrong drugs and living with the wrong people. And it finally caught up. Would you say you always used the right drugs? No, mm. but it's like, you know, it was too much for his constitution, you know. So far, I've survived it because I invented it more or less. <laughs> it's your 40th year with Motorhead. Did you ever think you would get this far? No. You don't think like that when you're beginning a band. You, know, you just want to play with some other guys and see what happens. You, know. you look about a year into the future. That's about it. I mean, 40 years is a joke. Yeah. <laughs> It's ridiculous. 
I have no idea what I'm supposed to do now. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever, uh, if you knew it would go on that long, would you have stick to the name or do you still would have yeah. chosen the name? No, 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 it's all right. It's a good name. All the best band names are one word. The Who is the best band name ever, I think. When I was small, I always thought you were Scandinavian because of that letter. Oh, that yeah. Was I was in Germany, too. Yeah. Did you just use it as a joke? or? No, I used it because it looks mean. <laughs> But there was a band before us, Bloristical, that used it, too. Because it looked mean? Yeah. Like gothic writing, it looks mean, you know. So, so many... Um, Musicians mention, mention you as a hero and as a role model. What is it you would say you started out doing differently than others? Louder and faster. Because we were the year before punk happened, you know. So uh, a lot of people really didn't like us. You know, the press didn't like us. They gave us six months to live. Out of that. So fuck them. They're all gone and I'm still here. Yeah, too bad. How close do you feel to punk? I liked a lot of the bands. But I didn't like a lot of them as well. The best were the Damned and the Pistols. I never liked the Clash particularly. I liked Joe Strummer in his previous band, the 101, as he's playing like vintage rock and roll, you know. But uh, punk gave the music business a kick up the ass, you know, which it was really in need of at the time, you know. Very complacent. And now it's got another kick up the ass from the internet because it, it cut its own throat by trying to bust everybody who downloaded it. I mean, what is that? How could you bust everybody? Everybody would be in jail under the age of 15. You know what I mean? Stupid. So you got the title Godfather of Heavy Metal? Yeah, I did. Do you feel yourself that way? No, of course not. It's ridiculous. We're not heavy metal anyway. We're a rock and roll band. You know. But even Metallica is calling you that. Yeah, I know. Well, Lars came to see us when we played LA. Uh, I don't know what year it was. So 82 or something, and he came along and he said he was the leader of our West Coast fan club. And he had Cliff, Cliff um, the bass player with him. And we found out later they were the only two in it. <laughs> and he got really drunk and threw up down himself and went home, yeah. The lyrics, you're writing them uh, still? Yeah. Do you never get bored, or why do you take still new ideas? Yeah, then I write about something else, you know. Uh, I mean, there's, there's plenty of scope for our sort of sound. War, death, and thwarted love, you know. There's always going to be plenty of that, with the human race being what it is. You know, we can't resist killing each other. And then justice is another big thing with my lyrics. And there's always been plenty of that. How much um, Elvis and Little Richard would you say is in your music? Oh, plenty, yeah. I mean, I used to have one of them hairstyles, you know, before my hair receded. Elvis was the one who showed us how to look, basically. Uh, I would say people like Carl Perkins, Little Richard, taught us how to sound and the Beatles taught us we could write our own songs. Do you hear your influence on others in other music? Uh, a little bit on early Metallica, yeah. Uh, there's a, a lot of, I mean, uh, what do they call Brazil, Max. What do they call Civil Tour was an early influence on them. But uh, they don't stick with it, you know, they change. Because a lot of bands follow trends, you know, and it's fatal. 
Because yes. you can't please all the people all the time. You know? We don't play for you. We play for us. And if we like it, then we put it out. And if you like it as well, that's a bonus. So it's not necessary. Yeah. But do you think you, it's, you don't want to change your music also? Is that I don't want to change it too much. It's doing quite well at the moment. <laughs> Someone said you told him that you knew the time before rock and roll. Yeah. Sure. Which sounds crazy. To you. <laughs> yeah. Not to me. I mean, I was born in 45, you know. So when rock and roll came out, I was 10, 11 years old, you know. And I knew immediately, you know. Because I saw this guy on TV, who was it? Billy Fury. There's all these chicks trying to tear his clothes off. And I thought, that's the job for me, you know. <laughs> Two years ago, I was, I had tickets to a concert that was cancelled because of, uh, uh, of your, uh, your health. Um, how do you feel about being able to perform now and still? Well, I'll do it as long as I can, you know. I mean, I'm 70 in December. So it's kind of... Ludicrous after that, I think, but I don't know, we'll see how I feel. Uh, and I learned in another uh, documentary that you actually moved out of your apartment that was so legendary, full of stuff. Oh yeah, well I moved the stuff into another apartment. I got a condo at the end of the old street, so I threw up both places. So you're fascinated by military memorabilia and uniforms. Um, How, how, what is your position on war, then, in the end? Well, war's stupid, you know. But as somebody once said, it's politics taken to its logical extreme. You know, I mean, they should put the, the leaders of the government concerned in a ring and let them fight to the death. And then, you know, the winner wins. It doesn't need two million people to die for it, you know. War's obscene, you know. And I was told you changed your drinking habits from uh, Coca-Cola, whiskey to orange. Vodka and orange, yes. How come? Well, Coca-Cola is really bad here. And I'm diabetic, so I shouldn't even look at it. You know. But I carried on drinking it for 10 years after I got diabetic. But uh, it was too much, you know, too much sugar. A friend of mine who's a big fan of you too, always has a big problem every Christmas to find people uh, celebrating his birthday with him because his birthday is on Christmas Day. Oh, he yeah. said it must be worse for you even. On Christmas Eve. It's Christmas Day here, right? Yeah. 24th. And uh, even your own parents only give you one present for the two things, you know. Even your parents, you know, you'd think <laughs> did you ever regret not getting married? No. Kind of I wrong. almost did a couple of times, but I never found a woman that could stop me looking at all the other women. So I didn't, I, I'm not going to be false, you know. I'm not going to get married and run around. I think if you get married, you should be fucking married, you know. That's a story. I could never do that. Ah, oh, that's good orange juice. <laughs> Is it good orange juice? Oh, yeah. Almost perfect. Except for the orange taste. <laughs> Are you sometimes surprised, or do you find it surprising that you're still able to perform um, given the amount of drugs and alcohol you consumed in your life? No, just lucky. Yeah, you know, I don't really recommend the lifestyle because most people die of it, you know. I mean, a lot of my friends are dead, you know, who shouldn't be, you know, who has a lot more music in them, you know. But that's the way life is, luck of the draw, you know. It's all down to random, it's luck. It's not, you can't plan your life. It doesn't work. If you're confronted by a situation that you didn't plan for and then you're lost, 
you know, baffled. So you might as well be ready for anything. And to do that, you have to take all the drugs you possibly can, so as you'll know what they are. Would you always continue performing? Or have you ever think... Uh, well, after death, ever? no. I have to stop then, I think. You never know, I could haunt somewhere. Mess up somebody else's cake. Tears for fears, or somebody you know, appear in the middle of it and go, everybody out, fire. 